The views on this page do not necessarily represent the views of Mac News 144. Mac News 144 is committed to keeping this page an open platform for all Israel. Thank you all for subscribing and submitting your videos to Mac News 144 of gmail.com. We have grown to over 100 subscribers so we can begin to stream live. Praises to the most high y'all. Yeah, you can turn it up. I see the strong Captain Taz and my mop in the building. I turn it all the way. Yo, Shalom, can you hear us? Khan, I hear you, I hear you. All right, bet, bet. Okay, so I we want everybody barely, watching. I can barely hear you, bro, so, because we tried to hook this joint up to the speaker, but it ain't really working. Okay, got, so. We got a few brothers here. Okay, okay, um, I'll try to, I'll try to, uh, to speak up as much as possible. Everybody watching, uh. First and foremost, I want to give all praise to you. How about Shimmy? How was shy? Um, this is the deacon from the Sakari. If y'all are watching, share it. I'm sure there's going to be edification coming from both sides. Um, can y'all hear me, or or is it is it low over there? No, we can hear you. But um, the brother is going to get an aux cord from his car, so um. I mean, we can just chop it up until he get that joint. Yeah, yeah, kind, kind, kind. Yeah, so if, if anybody uh, isn't familiar with these brothers, you could uh, give a brief introduction. Okay, yeah, we're the Israelite Saints of Christ, um, ISOC. We're based in Richmond, Virginia, and um, other locations around the United States, as well as Africa and, and um, Europe. But um, I'm Minister Michael Judah. I'm Chief Counselor Brother Jacob. Yeah, we just yeah he about to hook up the aux cord right now though. I don't know if it's gonna <laughs> still joint gonna reach. Hold on, it's for the phone. That joint. Where where is the aux mic that they use for like classes and stuff? Hey, right, Shalom, I'm right, Bar. I mean, nah. we chilling, though. We chilling. It's all good. It's all good. Shalom, I right, Bar, man, my uh, my California Hebrews, my California Hebrews in the building. California Hebrews, man. We got to do that. We got to do another summit. We got to do another summit. Oh, I, I know what I can do. I can hook this joint up to the people. Yeah, shouts out to the brother I bar that part, that part, that part. Yeah, check out that brother's music, man. He got some heat. He got some heat, brother I bar. Yeah, do a collab. Shalom, brother Bayath. Shalom. Man, I'm retired. I did four albums. I did four albums in one year. I did four albums in 12 months and retired afterwards. Yeah, but let me know on the comment board. Let me know on the comment board. All right, we can hear you now. Okay, cool. Let me know on the comment board. Everybody can hear. Everybody can hear on the comment board. You don't want to get a chair or something, bro? No, I'm good. You sure? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we good. We good. What? What? I'm doing something. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh, get, get some tissue and blow your nose. Know. I'll be done in a second. All right. So y'all good. Everybody can hear. We all good. We all ready. Y'all can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you clearly. Okay. okay. So again, I'm going to give all praise to you. How about Shimmy? I was shy. Of course, first and foremost. Um, 
this is going to be a, a polygamy discussion. Um, I'm trying to hear the brother brother out uh, to see to see his point of view, his perspective of the issue. Um, I seen the brother's post. He made a couple of posts. Uh, I got on a post. We had a short dialogue, and now we ended up here. Um, so our stance, of course, I'll give our stance first and foremost that we don't believe that having multiple, we don't believe there's anything wrong with having multiple wives. Um, we see it all through the scriptures. Uh, but I will say this just for, just to qualify and quantify our position. Some brothers are not in a position to be able to deal with it right now. Um, and sometimes it's not wise, especially if you're doing it to just get multiple pieces of pussy. Let me just be quite frank. Um, so, you know, it's not, it's not for everybody, but we definitely don't believe it's not a sin uh, and we don't believe it's wrong. So I'm going to let the brother give his, uh, his explanation and give a brief synopsis of, why, of what, what they believe uh, on that side of the camp. So go ahead, brother. You got the floor. All right, so first and foremost, you know, all praise to the Most High for brethren being able to dialogue. Um, I don't know if y'all hear me clearly over there, but... Um, You're yeah, good. Like You're good. Brother, okay, yeah. Like the brother said, we um, dialogue log briefly. Usually when you bring up the topic of, of multiple wives, it gets pretty, you know what I'm saying, get hectic real fast. And we don't understand because we're like, yo, if we don't... If we're not going to take multiple wives, we really should be happy because you're going to have more wives, you know. But for us, man, when you examine the scriptures, it says, um, like, when you go to the book of 1 Corinthians, when you go to the book of 1 Corinthians, um, I guess we can go to chapter. We can go to chapter, um, we can go to chapter 7. Go to verse 2. Verse 2? Yeah. All right, this is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, and verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Right, so with that being said, I mean, that's just an overview of of what's going on. It says, let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. Um, when you see in the scriptures, you do see um, rulers, kings, having multiple wives. But when you truly examine the scriptures and you take yourself, you take your, your own self out, you take your own wants and desires out of it and you examine it for what it is, you'll never find a person that's within captivity having multiple wives. You don't see any of the 12 disciples having multiple wives. You see David have multiple wives after he gained the kingdom. So um, we're not saying that we don't believe in multiple wives. We believe that there's a time and a period for everything in the scriptures. And, um, and we believe in following Christ, following after what Christ, the example that Christ laid down, which is we he never taught you to, to go out and nation build and get multiple wives. He never taught you to do that. And um, the post that he was referring to, I was specifically talking about the people that try to use nation building as an excuse to multiply wives. There's a difference in saying, I believe in multiple wives because... You know, um, David did it. But when you try to add stuff to the scriptures, like we're nation building. When the, when the Lord told you that the nation building is going to happen through repentance, through going out through the highways and byways, that's how you're going to nation build. But I don't know if the brother Jacob wanted to say something um, before we hit scripts and, you know, go over a few things. Do you have anything to say, Ezra, as a, as an overview? Not really. Um, 
I, I wasn't here for a second. I was running out to get an auxiliary cord, but I'm Minister Ezra. Shalom, brother. Um, Shalom, fam. Not really. Um, my mindset is kind of the same. I mean, we kind of, we are all of a, kind of one mind generally around multiple wives. I don't know. Um, we have the same ideology as far as we don't think that multiple wives, like, let me, let me say this. Most of the time when we see situations of brothers with multiple wives, like you, you mentioned at the beginning, that a lot of brothers, they don't examine if they really handle it yes or not. They don't look at it like, I can handle this situation having three, four, or five women. They would put it and broach the subject of having multiple wives like, well, it's lawful, so I can get it. I can have 10, I can have 11. I can. That's their mindset. And I'm just I'm curious to hear your understanding of it. Okay. Um, so... I have a question. I just want to. I just want to get straight to the point. Is having multiple wives a sin right now? You're not going to see that explicitly in the scriptures. So we will have to go with what's in the scriptures. But um, so 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 wait 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 wait. Let me get a direct answer, brother. Is multiple wives? Right now, a sin, yes or no? If you are a student of Christ, meaning you're striving to be a deacon, a bishop, a leader within Israel, meaning you are an example to other Israelites, yes, it is a sin according to Scripture. Okay, so it's not a sin if you're just a normal Israelite following the laws, statutes, and commandments. If you're following the law, statutes, and commandments, you'll be striving to be a leader within Israel, according to Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 4, and Ezekiel chapter 3 and 11, it informs you to go out and warn your people. So you can't use that as, a, as an excuse to just be like, I, I'm just a regular Israelite. I don't want to be a leader. Because so, we're in dire uh, right now. Uh, we're in captivity. Okay, here, here, here's what I'm saying. Here's, here's the... the the conjecture and the deflection that I'm getting. If we can get a straight answer, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. One, one you said we got to deal with what's in the scriptures. What is a sin according to the Bible? Transgression of the law. Transgression of the law. Okay, so where in the law does it say it's a sin to have multiple wives? It's not going to say in the law when you if you if you refer to the law as just the first five books you're not going to see it there but in the law in Deuteronomy 18 and 15 down to 18 it says to hear Christ so when you go to Christ we understand that Christ is the word of the, of the word of the Most High if Christ is the word of the Most High that means Christ is the law so if Christ saying during this time during this time period. Be the husband of one wife if you want to be my deacon or my bishop. Christ, um, wait, 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 wait. Christ, so when Christ said not one jot nor one tittle, you mean to tell me that Christ came to change the law of wives? There's no law of wives. The law on how you deal with your wives? The law on if you have multiple wives? Christ came to change that? You're talking about, you're referring to the judgments. Are you talking about Exodus 21? No, I'm not. There's That's, a law on how to govern. There's a law on how to govern your multiple wives. Can you, there's can not you a law so I can go to it. Deuteronomy chapter 21. All right. Let's go there. Deuteronomy chapter 21. Verse 15. All right, you want you want us to read it or you or you got it? Uh, Deuteronomy twenty one, uh, fifteen says, if a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, verse sixteen, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which was indeed the firstborn, 
So here you have Moses teaching you how to govern your two wives, dealing with the inheritance of your firstborn. He didn't say uh, if you have two wives, you've already committed sin. He didn't say if you have two wives, put away one. He said if you have two wives, this is how you deal with them. I got you. You got any more, any more for that? Uh, I, how many more do I need? Bro, we just discussing, man. Why you, why you getting all uptight? Well, we well, here's the, here's the reason. Here, here's here's why I don't think here's why I don't think you guys are coming. In, I can't speak on everybody else, but here's why I think you're not coming in sincerity. I asked you two questions. I asked you a question. That's you evil gave surmising, two, brother. That's, that's but you gave surmising, two. Brother. You gave two. You gave two different answers to a simple question that I said, speaking of yay or nay. Was it a sin or is it a sin to have multiple wives? Because you want yay or nay, and it's not the scripture. In the scripture, some things aren't just black and white. Like when you go to the to the um the scenario when the brother he spilled his seed. There's no law that says I can't spill my seed if I don't take my brother's wife. There's no law that's going to say if thou wait 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 seed, thou shalt get wait. I'm sorry. Brother. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not to cut you off. Are you telling me that? The brother got put to death for spilling his seed? No, that's not what I'm saying. Even so, if you say the brother was put to death for not taking his his, sis, his brother's wife after he died, even if you just say that's the reason why, there's still no law that says you will get put to death for not taking your brother's wife. Oh, so you're talking about the judgments of the law. But that that's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, man, you just read a judgment. But but that's not a judgment. judgment. That's not a judgment. That's a law dealing with how you govern your multiple wives. So you said one thing. You said that Christ told us. You said that Christ told us not to have multiple wives. Can you show me where Christ told us that? Give me the book of Matthew chapter five. Con, con, he did. Well, real quick, just for the crowd, because I see, I see the brothers on the comment. I know there's a lot of brothers and sisters watching, so let me just bring this out for edification. Uh, Deuteronomy 25 and 5, it said, if, the, if brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without, without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife, and perform the duty of an husband's brother un, uh, unto her. So uh, it wasn't about him spilling the seed. He didn't go into his brother's wife, and that was the transgression. But uh, go ahead and show me the scripture where Christ uh, said you can't have multiple wives or it's a sin. All right, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. All right, I pulled that to make a simple point of the lust aspect and um, how you can't take a woman for lust. Not saying that, you know, brothers are taking women for lust, but let's just establish that first. Now let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 5. Actually, you can start at verse 4. The book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read? that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. So 
Christ said, they twain shall be one flesh. When you look up that word twain, it means two. They two shall be one flesh. Now, I have a question for you, um, brother. Is Genesis part of the law, part of the Torah? I asked you, is Christ, where does Christ teach in that it's a sin? That's what I'm asking. We answered you earlier that there's no scriptures that's telling you it's a sin. We okay, you thank you, earlier. thank you, thank you, thank you. Because you, you gave me three, this is your third answer. No, You have hold on. one answer, hold then on. you had two answers, then you just gave a third answer. Hold so, on, Deacon, hold on, Deacon Hakai. Before you, before you start to put words in my mouth, when you asked the first time, I said, if you are a leader, a deacon, or you're striving to be a bishop, according to scripture, it tells you to be the husband of one wife, does it not? According to what scripture? Let's get it. Because now you're playing games. You know the scripture. First Timothy. Well, let, let's read it. First Timothy chapter 3. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2. A bishop then must be blameless. It starts off saying a, a bishop must be blameless. Now we're going to figure out what are the qualifications for being blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. So that's talking about the bishop. Now skip down. Let's read about the deacon. Skip down to verse 10. De this is We're speaking to Deacon Hakab. Let's keep that in mind. <laughs> verse 10. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children in their own house as well. So, okay. when you ask so, a question about it so that's, earlier, I told you that if you're striving to be a deacon, a bishop, and it's true that, yes, it is a sin to have multiple wives because disobedience is sin. Disobedience is that's the sin of witchcraft. And the scriptures clearly say it does, it, there's no mystery to that. There's no mystery. Okay. Okay. So now you're telling me, uh, d d where does it say that uh, transgressing Paul's writings uh, is against the matter of fact? Here's a better question, which is a great question. So, does that mean that Christ or Paul couldn't be bishops? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37. What was that last question? Can you repeat that last question? I'm asking you, according to your understanding of what Paul is saying, does that mean, was, was Christ not a bishop is what I'm asking? Christ is the priest. He's the high priest. The high priest is above the, the office of a bishop. A bishop is a leader, right? Yeah, an lead, uh, elder. A, a leader and an elder. So was Christ not a leader? What about James? Yeah. What about... What about, what about, yeah, he was an elder. He was an elder and a leader. So that means that Christ couldn't be a bishop according to you if you believe that's what Paul's saying. So let me read this. Deuteronomy 4 and 2. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Now, with that being said, brother, are you saying that Paul is a false prophet? No, I'm not saying that. I'll, I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm saying. Let me bring this scripture out and then uh, con, con, con. Well, first you... You, said, you you just put Deuteronomy 4 and 2 and all we did was read a scripture. So, no, he... This is this is why. Hold on, hold on. Let me read this real quick. Paul is a let, me, prophet. let me read this real quick. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 25.
Second Peter two. What the? Hold on, bro. They're trying to get the audio set up. Hold on. Can y'all hear me? I don't know why. What exactly is doing? You gotta have to turn the Bluetooth off. Yeah, you gonna have to turn the Bluetooth. Just hit mode, hit mode. Just hit mode until you get to the right one. It's right there. Yeah. Until you get to the line in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. I'm sorry, if you if you said something, I haven't heard anything in the last couple. Nah, I I, I well, didn't you, say you, nothing. You, I'm you saying said if you said anything. Well you okay, Khan, you guys said that a bishop must have one wife, according to Paul, because you think that's what it means. Now, I'm asking you, was Christ a bishop, or is Christ a bishop? Hey, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Shalom, can you hear us? I hear y'all. Alright. Alright, we're back. Yeah. Back. Yeah. So All now right. I'm asking, y'all said that you you in order to be a bishop, you have to have one wife, right? So I'm asking. We didn't you, say that. We didn't say that. The scripture said that. Okay, okay. So according to your understanding, here's why I'm gonna show you why your understanding is flawed of that scripture. Is Christ was Christ a bishop? What? Can you get to your point? Listen, listen, listen. This brother Michael has to stand on his square. I'm you in my house by my... You to Michael. Um, I'm in... I am. Stop talking to your fans and talk directly to your brother. I'm talking to Come Michael. On, He's asking you guys questions. Tell him to stand on his square and deal with me man to man. Was Christ a bishop, yes or no? Bro. The scripture never calls Christ a bishop. Why would okay, you okay, Christ? okay, okay. Here we go. First Peter chapter 2, verse 25. For okay. ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Y'all need to repent for lying. We need to repent for lying? You just because lied and said the Bible never called Jesus Christ a bishop. Okay, that means I made a mistake. Now, why did you pull that scripture? Okay, because he's saying that according to his flawed understanding of what Paul is saying, that you have to have one wife in order to qualify to be a bishop. That's not what Paul is saying. Now, if we want to do that... How many wives does Christ have? Christ has none. He He had no... Israel. So that's that's a literal wife? Does not the scripture call Israel the wife or the bride? So of is Paul so so is Paul talking about literal wives? Yes or no? Yes, he's talking about literal wives. Exactly. So let's let me have you guys read this. First Corinthians seven and twenty nine. Let me have you guys read this for me. First Corinthians seven and twenty nine, since we want to make Paul the authoritative of the whole scriptures. Let's follow Paul all the way. Let's not pick okay, a two. Okay, hold on. Before we, before you, before we read that scripture and these side comments, man. It, yeah, man, these little side comments. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse thirty-seven. Real quick, before we go to First Corinthians seven, because you're not against us, you against whoever you think you against us, you against Paul, bro. I'm not I'm not against you. I'm not against you or Paul. I know what my beloved brother Paul is talking about. You don't. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 14, and verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you 
are the commandments of the Lord. What did Paul say he was writing? Commandments of the Lord. So if Paul is letting you know that he's writing the commandments of the Lord, it's showing you that he has some type of higher understanding of the law that they didn't have, the Pharisees didn't have, and they were scholars in the law. Certain okay, can we, stay, can we stay on that? Not, not to cut you off, but let's stay on that subject before we even go to 1 Corinthians 7 and, 7 and 29. Let's go to before 2 we, Corinthians 8 and 8. Before we, we read more of Paul's letters, we have to acknowledge that what he's writing is the commandments of the Lord. Okay, okay. Well, I'm about to disprove what you're saying. Let's read 2 Corinthians 8 and 8. Second Corinthians 8 and 8, it says, I speak not by commandment. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to, before, before it cut out, I wanted to, you guys to read 2 Corinthians 8 and 8 because the brother mentioned that everything Paul is writing is commandments, but in 2 Corinthians 8 and 8, it says, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. Uh, and here's another one as well. Uh, matter of fact, I do have a question. Is everything that, uh, it was everything that Paul, that Paul was speaking of the Lord? First of all, um, you pulled a, you pulled a scripture and, and I'm glad you pulled that scripture. Um, do you want to explain what Paul meant by that? Or do you want to just pull a random scripture? Uh, I'm a, well, I can show you all throughout his writings, uh, him admitting and confessing that he's not speaking by commandment and these aren't, com things aren't commandments that he's writing. Um, let's go to the scripture that you pulled though and explain that scripture. Second Corinthians eight and eight. Okay. Paul is giving, Paul is giving instructions. And he says, I, let's start at verse 7. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. Okay, so what is he saying there? Is he's he saying, saying he commandments, like he's not speaking commandments, or what is, what is he saying? He's exact. that's... It, it's clear it's in black and white. I mean, it's, it's, no, but, it's plain. Okay. Oh, because now you got a contradiction with first, first Corinthians 14. We just pulled the same I, thing. This, I don't this, have a... Then, then you explain it. Explain, the, the, explain no, it then. No, brother. no, no, no. You, that's what I'm saying. You pulled the scripture. He pulled the scripture in first, first Corinthians 14, right? It's the same thing. I'm not saying that you're him, but this is typically when we have the conversations with people that call themselves Christians. We pull one scripture. They say they can save the nations. We go to Psalms 147. You now have a contradiction. Now, no, no, no. To... Let me, okay, let me, let me reconcile what I'm saying. Some things Paul was writing through the spirit, of course, that gave him charge. Some things Paul was writing that weren't commandments. We clearly see it. This I speak not by commandment. This I speak by advice. Uh, all things are lawful, but not expedient, meaning that I'm not going to, it's not a law that you can't do certain things, but it may not be expedient, which is why I said a lot of things that Paul was given was advice, and I could prove it with more precepts. So did, did, when Paul says by occasion, he clarified, right? By occasion, uh, we'll clarify what you're saying. He, when Paul said that, he clarified before he did it, right? He said, I'm speaking by occasion, right? I'm speak, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion. So he's clarifying now. Right. So in 1 Timothy 3, did he clarify he's speaking by occasion or what? He didn't clarify that he's speaking by occasion, but when we go to clear examples of bishops not having wives, they wouldn't be qualified to have a bishop, so that's not what he's talking about. But First Timothy three, wait, I don't know if maybe I'm getting this wrong. So when First Timothy three was pulled, nobody said that you brought up Christ's example. Nobody said that 
to be a bishop, you have to have a wife. Nobody said that. Well, that's what that's what your understanding of what Paul is saying. No, we never. So said you can be a bishop and not have one. You you can be a bishop and not have a wife. We're saying, can you be a bishop with multiple wives? Well, that's according. The that's the question, and I'm that's saying that it's question. advice that I'm saying I'm saying that not only can we see Paul giving advice. But I'm saying, just like the wife is figurative, the wife, the one, the wife that is talking about in First Timothy is dealing with the figurative church. Okay, we. Know that's your. The that's your. That's your wife. That's your wife. That's the. That's the. The, the bishop's wife. The oh, church. Hold on, hold on. Repeat that. What you just said. Repeat that again. That's the bishop's wife. His church. So. First Timothy three, the wife is the church. Absolutely. Did you say Christ didn't have a wife, or he did? And not not a literal wife. His wife is the figurative church, just like the Most High said. His two wives are the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom. What? <laughs> oh my God! So you telling me? That the Most High never called the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom his two wives. No, I never said that. What I'm, what I'm asking you is, I first said, when we read about Paul, he clarifies when speaking by occasion. Because then 1 Corinthians 14, 37 comes into play. All things that I write are by commandments of the Lord, right? But then if he's not, he's clarifying it, correct? Okay, one second. Let me get another scripture. Now, I, I ask you, I'm asking you a question. You the one that pulled on us last year. No, no, no. You guys, you guys also, you guys also pulled 1 Corinthians 7 to substantiate your point. So let me read in 1 Corinthians 7. It says, 1 Corinthians 7, verse 6, but I speak this by permission and not a commandment. So if the problem is that you want me to, to say it right where he's saying something else, when we can see it all through his writings, I mean, it's, it's, it's illogical for you to think that. Why Again, is I'm, why is it illogical for me to think that? Because when Paul be, clarifies, because, clarifies, speaking by occasion, we go to First Timothy three. He gives you what? Is he speaking by occasion there? Well, so 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 what are you saying? What are you saying? That, so what is what is what is where there is no law, there is no sin. Me, you brother, you not. I'm not letting you answer the question. Was Paul, Paul speaking by occasion or not? Can a deacon absolute, or a bishop absolute, abs, abs, I'm, Listen, I said it's figurative, just like Ephesians 5 and 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body, just like Brother Alizar just uh, uh, brought out in the comment. So again, I'm saying it's figurative. And even listen, even if I was to entertain that it wasn't figurative, it's advice. We clearly see that it's not in the law. Where there is no law, there is no sin. So if you can't find a law against it, then I'm not sinning by doing it. What did Christ say? Go to Isaiah 8 and 20. First, first go to Deuteronomy 18. That's crazy. I can't get one question answered. You, brother, the, when we started I, the conversation, I, you, I you asked where, first of all, I'm supposed to be debating your underlink, not even debating your underlink, having a discussion with your underlink, but you got to grab the mic because the his ass is, got, his ass is getting washed up. When her underling, brother. Yeah, Hold give on. him the mic back. Hold on. First of all, Deacon, Deacon Hakai, I'm going to keep calling you Deacon Hakai because that's what you call yourself. Um, all right. Thank you. This was supposed to be a dialogue, a conversation between brothers. You're calling it a debate. So it's showing that you. No, you said no, I you took, I, you listen, no, I took it back. I said discussion. I took it back. I said discussion. The scripture says don't interrupt men in the midst of speech, though. So if you, when we first started the conversation, you said that we were being disingenuous. Now, it's been proven that now you're being disingenuous because you're calling this a debate 
when we're looking at it as, oh, let's examine the scriptures. But did I not rectify, did I say discussion? Did I not rectify my statement? All right, bro. But so I'm going to let Ezra speak because he was speaking. That's the reason why we're, that's what he said we came on here as a dialogue. I'm not looking to show up for people watching. That's it. Every time we do something, it's for the edification, edification of Israel. One second, one second, one second. Somebody said it's buffering. Can y'all see? Can y'all see and hear it clearly? Yeah, we can. Not, not y'all. I'm talking about the audience. Okay, okay. So, so I, again, I wanted to know, proven to the fact that Paul was giving advice, um, what does it mean where there is no law, there is no sin? Because that's the reason why we got taken down this rabbit hole, because I asked, what it, was it a sin? So I'm asking, where there is no law, there is no sin, what does that mean? Because if it's not a sin, we don't even need to be discussing it right now. Can you go to this, Ron? Start at verse 18. That's crazy. That shows, that shows how much the, the lack of respect. That shows the lack of respect they have for their own brother. Let you finish. Okay. I, first off, the brother's been calling you deacon the whole time. You've been saying underlings, telling us to repent, telling us we ain't to miss the wickedness and madness. I, we ain't disrespect I, you I, once. I never, I never said just, you was in the midst of wickedness or madness, man. I never said did you that. Tell us to repent? Did I said you, you tell us to repent? But to repent does it mean you did something wicked? Is it am I am I an error? Did the most high repent for making he, for making man? Error. Did the most high say, Yes, you are an error. That don't mean it's that don't mean you did something wicked though. Okay, so let's move past that point. Why did you call my brother an underling? Is that disrespect or no? I don't. I don't think it's an underling. I don't. I'm okay, sorry. I don't think it's disrespect. I don't think it's disrespect. You don't mean anything. You know his name. You see him on Facebook. Call him by his name, brother. Nobody disrespects you. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, and verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brothers, like unto thee. And will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak. Or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So, brother, who is this prophet in Deuteronomy 18 talking about? We all know that's talk who that's talking about. That's talking about Christ. Okay, Isaiah 8, 20. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8, and verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Uh, now, that that's pretty evident, all right? To so the law and to the testimony. We know what the law is. What's the <laughs> testimony, brother? Uh, just go ahead and explain it, man. I'm a, I'm a, listen, I feel like, like y'all are not being precise and concise. I'm Why? just asking simple questions because I'm asking simple questions and I can't get them answered. You guys are uh, going through a whole sermon before I can get one question answered. I so I'm gonna let you fin I'm gonna let you finish that and then I would like my question answered, please. Okay, I'm still talking, right? So I need you to tell me what the um what's the testimony? Break it down. I'm asking you. I would say the testimony is the scriptures. Revelation 19. The book of Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. 
And he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now the scriptures tell us that Jesus is the testimony, to the law and to the testimony. Moses taught in the law that there was going to be a man to come of your brethren, that if we have to follow and get to the kingdom, we have to listen to this man's words. Okay, what word before. What word did the man say that it said it's a sin to have multiple wives? Or we passed that already because your brother said, your brother, your dear beloved brother said it's not a sin. So now are you guys recanting that and saying it is a sin? No, what, was, what I'm saying and what he was saying is the same thing. In 1 Timothy 3, there's a man that's on the scene that got crucified. He brought a word. He said, right? Male and female, just from the beginning, right? Paul said, 1 Timothy 3, any man that has to be a deacon or a bishop, and we can go down the verse because that'll preset back to Matthew. You can only have one wife. Now, for some reason, you came up with the understanding that we were saying, uh, to be a bishop, you have to have a wife. Nobody said that. We're, the point of the topic is multiple wives, not a single Wait, wife. Oh, oh, okay, so if we're speaking, if we're speaking Christ's teachings, why would Christ give an allegorical parable of having ten wives? A righteous allegory of having ten wives, if we're speaking Christ's teachings. Bro, can you go there? <laughs> Matthew 25, 1 to 10. You, I'm going to let you, whatever verse you want to pull. Go ahead, read it. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I wouldn't Sorry. read the whole chapter either. We all know about the, the, the parable of the five foolish virgins and five wise virgins. Right. So all I'm asking is, if it's, so, if, it, if it's so unrighteous, why would Christ give an give a allegory, uh, a righteous allegory for it? Did, how many allegories did Christ give on multiple subjects? I don't understand. That. But is that not a righteous allegory? It's an it's, it's an it's an allegory. We'll put it that way. It's an allegory. Okay. So 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 was it righteous? Yes or no? What do you mean? Was it righteous? I don't understand. That. So, were, were five of the virgins righteous? Explain your point, brother. We know righteousness is the law, so what are you saying? Why did you pull Matthew 25? Oh oh, you're telling me that a You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? Let's, 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 that, bro, that's, let's, it's, it's just let crazy let how finish, I can't get, finish, I, I can't get, no, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, bro. I've been letting you talk for hella, man. Let me say something real quick, bro. You guys are deflecting like crazy, man. First Corinthians 7, hold on. First Corinthians 7 and 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. What does that mean? I know what it means. What is that? Me, I don't understand. I'm trying to find out the correlation. Why are you pulling these random it, scriptures? Listen, I'm asking Thank questions God. that haven't got answered that I asked 20 minutes ago. So what is that? What does First Corinthians 7 and 29 mean? Can you give me your exegetic breakdown of it? But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. That means that you're put, when you're out there, like you have brothers now, you're married, brother. I've seen that you're married. You have multiple brothers out in Israel that's married, right? They're pushing the truth to the point where it might not be that they have to, there's, there's things that they have to tend to. They have to tend to the Lord's word first. So they have to move, it might have to move, and it might look like as though they're not married. They might have to be out there, and they have to have wives of like minds to understand that they're out there doing the work. Though the wives might want them to be home and doing other things. How now, often do you do the work? A lot. I'm not married, brother. You're not married? No, I'm not. So are you a bishop? Brother, you... you listen, you I'm, 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 I'm asking... The things that you're saying is projected on me, you're doing. How is somebody... Listen, how is somebody who is not qualified to be a bishop trying to have a dialogue with me about multiple wives. Why does your name say deacon? Are you a bishop? I'm a deacon. So I don't understand your question. 
according to your understanding of what Paul is saying, you can't even qualify to be a bishop. Why? So is that? Paul is cutting you. Explain that. Is... Explain how Paul just cut me. I want you to break that down for me because you're still on listen, a different understanding. Please break that listen, down. Listen, 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 listen. According to your understanding, right. you have to be, you, you can't even qualify to be a bishop, brother. Okay, I, I'm asking you how. You said that already. Explain that. Because you believe that only way to qualify to be a bishop is you have you have to have a wife. And not only okay. you can't have Imagine multiple wives, but you have to have a wife. So people, you, got, according listen, to Paul, you're listen, not a listen, bishop. Brother, brother, there's Mike up here, there's Jacob, and then I'm Ezra. Tell me which one of us three said that. One of y'all, I don't know. One of y'all said it, man. I heard three. one of y'all. I heard I heard one of y'all. Mike always already gave me three three different answers earlier. So one of y'all no, said no. it. Because remember, remember, at the beginning you said Christ is Christ a bishop. Then you pulled the scripture. And we were trying to figure out why you went there. Because you pulled the scripture saying, oh, they call Christ a bishop. Repent, you lying. Now we're asking, how does that contradict 1 Timothy 3 when we never made a statement that a brother that's a bishop or a, bishop or a deacon has to have a wife? Nobody said that. <laughs> right, 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 right. Can you answer the question? Listen, 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 listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Nobody, nobody, I'm, I'm waiting. That's why I said I don't understand the precepts that you're pulling are not correlating to anything. Bro, just, the point I made, the, no, the point, the point I made what the heck? Listen, bro. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Cause I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna go here. So, let's read it. First Timothy three and two. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. So you don't have one wife, so you can't be a bishop. This is your second time lying. Man. You know, he don't get it, man. He don't get they, it. There you go again with the lie. I thought you ain't say nothing out of order, man. Lying. Bro, bro, bro. Listen, listen, listen. You're going to sit up here and tell me that according to Paul, according to Paul's writings, it says a bishop must. What, is, what does it mean? What does must mean? A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife. This is what you must have in order to be a bishop because you got to know how to run your household, right? You got to know how to run your household. You got to know how to run your marriage, right? Before you could even run a church. This is the writings of Paul. Again, but listen, I don't want to go down another rabbit hole again. Um, I'm not. I need my, to main, you. my main, let, 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 let me, let me say this real quick because all I've gotten, let me, let me say this real quick. All I've gotten was nothing but deflection and y'all passing the mic around like hot potatoes because your young man didn't want to stand on his own square and face me. So my Again, main issue was, was it a sin? Was it a sin or not? All you guys agreed that it was not a sin. Brother, now you're trying to come back on and tell brother, me it is a sin. Brother, you pulled Christ being a bishop, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Did Christ have a wife yes. before? He didn't have a literal wife. No, I didn't ask you that. Does he have a wife? Yes or no? He, he has a figurative wife, absolutely. And you didn't even know he was a bishop. And how the hell are you an elder? I'm not. A, and who said I was an elder? I, you all over the place. Or a never, bishop. How um, are you going to say you're a bishop you didn't know you, uh, Christ was an elder? Me, I never said I was a bishop. You told me. That Christ did he not? Did, you hear? I got eighteen witnesses. Listen, Christ, listen, listen, listen. My, my. So let me, let me, let me. Listen, let me say this real quick, because my phone's about to die. My main concern was to know from you guys if it was a sin or not. You guys said no. First, you gave me three answers. Then you turned around. Then you turned around and said, "Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, it is a sin." So, are you saying basically? Christ said it. You said Christ said it was a sin. And you go to Paul, you're saying that Paul is Christ. Is, is that what you're saying? 
Bro, you're not about to jump through 20 different scripts, random precepts, and then end the call with me on a question. We're not doing that. Uh, you got to, I'm talking Listen, everybody, everybody, listen, everybody on here seeing y'all deflecting questions. I answered your questions. Y'all went to three precepts I'm to prove your I'm point. This, this, the whole, listen, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go through, I'm going to extract, I'm going I'm to edit this discussion, and I'm going to show you guys how you deflected and how you gave multiple different answers. Y'all straight up said it wasn't a sin. And then you said it was a sin after that. That's called uh, uh, a hypocrite, basically. You, you told me that Christ didn't have a wife, and then you pulled a scripture saying he was a bishop, and in the scriptures that Paul said he must have a bishop, must be one of one wife, and now you tell me he had a wife. Bro, you can... Okay, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me set this match up. Let me set this match up. We got Brother Uriel. We got Brother Uriel. Is that one of your members? You need to show Chris, 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 Chris. I'm wondering why. Who, 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 who's, man, listen, listen, listen. Uriel, Uriel and Alizar is about to go live. Is Uriel ISO, uh, G or ISO C? How you guys say it? Yes. Okay, ISO C. Okay, they can go live and they can, they can have this same discussion.